It's now time to look at what happens on the 19th of November because India take on Australia at the well in Ahmedabad and it doesn't get bigger. It's the World Cup final. It's uh, India can't get bigger than that and now there's Australia who's joined them. Michael, what can we expect from this big game? <laughs> Well, I think 150,000 will squeeze into the, the stadium there. Um, well, it'll be an amazing atmosphere. Um, I think, I mean, I, I personally can't wait to, to hear the anthems. In particular, I'm not saying this because I'm here, but the Indian anthem in front of all those people. The Australians have probably, I don't know, 60 in the crowd somewhere. <laughs> They'll try and make a better noise, but the, the, the noise from the Indian anthem will be something uh, very, very special. I was there in 2011 for the final at the Wankhede where there was 40 odd thousand. Now I'm going to see mm -hmm. India in a World Cup final in India with 130 odd thousand, which would be incredible. Um, I think the pitch will be slow. You know, I think uh, I look at that pitch, Afghanistan, South Africa, I met about it, it'll probably be quite similar with spin that played a big part. I think we'll see a similar kind of surface. How teams shape up, I can't think India will change anything. Uh, Australia might make a change. They might look at bringing in Stoinis for Labuschagne mm -hmm. because I think Australia might be wary of what the batters of India will do to the likes of Zampa and Glenn, Glenn Maxwell. And if those two get hit, well, the captain might have to find some overs. So I'm not saying Stoinis is going to get many wickets, and, but it, the captain might feel that he needs just a little bit of backup in terms of bowling and a Stoinis bowl and a few little dibbly dobblies might be a backup. And also, um, you know, the fact that I think Smith and Labuschagne at four and five, I don't think India will fear those two. And I really don't. I think they need more of a hitter uh, down the back end in Stoinis. So we'll see what they go in terms of formation. But um, I, I'm with DK, the best two teams by, not by a mile, I think India by a country mile is, are the best team and Australia are the best of the, of the rest. Mm -hmm. And I think they're just a decent distance away from many of the other teams. I just think they've got the power and the know-how. As DK said, eight, eight wins on the trot now. And that's just momentum going into a final, which is exactly what you need. But DK, win the toss, bat first for both teams. Where do you see it going, considering Ahmedabad, like uh, Michael was saying, it could be a slow pitch? It's a win the toss, bat first for sure. <laughs> both teams will try and put a big total and put pressure. We saw in the second semi-final what sort of pressure Australia were under. They got off to a flyer, but still they were on the back foot for a majority of that, you know, post the couple of openers getting out. So, win the toss, bat first, there's no doubt there. Mm -hmm. Well, but uh, considering India, like Michael said, is not going to bring about any changes at all. Are you surprised with the one change that Michael's talking about? I, I, I would be surprised if Australia make a change. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a team uh, which will try and stick to what they've done in the semi-final. It just feels like it'll be <laughs> very hard to convince a Labuschagne to say, you know, I might be keeping you out and bring Stoinis in. I think the hard conversation with Stoinis has probably happened before this game. They will stick to the same... Um, they will stick to the same team because I feel it's not going to be a high-scoring game. It will oh. be, you know, it be a 270, 280 sort of a game. It's not going to be a 330. So, they'd require the services of a Manus Labuschagne to probably come and weather out the storm a little bit if it's turning. Those kind of things is what I feel. We'll know, I guess, uh, Michael could very well be right. Uh, but uh, it's going to be a hell of a game. I think mm -hmm. India have uh, taken, a, no, I don't like the word revenge, but in a way, payback uh, for what happened in 2019. Mm -hmm. And here is an opportunity to do something that happened 20 years ago. 2003 final, we had a great tournament in the run-up and we met a, a raging Australia. Ricky Ponting and the co, uh, and Ricky Ponting and company just made sure that uh, India had a tough day, as we all know. Here is a chance for a great payback again. India was Australia, Ahmedabad, 130 people, 130,000 people and I can promise you 99% will be wearing blue shirts and it will be a sea of blue yet again. The who's who will be watching that game but most importantly there will be a billion people on TV praying that India get over the line. They look like the team to beat mm. but I really will be surprised if Australia can uh, you know, try and outdo what India is doing right now. What they have achieved so far is one of the greatest achievements by a cricket team in, in World Cups. I think 25 games was the, the record held by Australia over a period of three World Cups, if I'm right. And they were very dominant through that phase. They didn't drop a game in 2003 or 2007. It doesn't happen too often. India have got a chance to go 11 on 11. And uh, I feel they will do it. Uh, being um, an Indian who's been part of the team, I know the amount of effort they've put in. I know how hard they've worked over a period of time, the setbacks they've had. All of that have been fueled 
in by this Indian team, who, which has been led by a maverick captain in Rohit Sharma, who is walking the talk every step of the way and showing how it needs to be done. And he has a set of people who believe in him thoroughly. And that is always a good sign. I would just love for them to do exactly what they've done. They're not going to change. Everybody will go about it the same way. It's going to be a cracker of a game. And at the end of it, I can just visualize Rohit Sharma lifting that World Cup and a million, not a million, a billion people having a plenty of smiles in their faces. Well, the power of visualization, DK, I, you, I'll, every Indian fan hopes that this comes to and you can see the emotion with what you're talking. We, Michael, you know what this means to Indian fans, but to Rohit personally as well. He's spoken about how he missed out in 2011 and really hurt him. So for him to be here standing in front of 130, I mean, 130,000 people at Ahmedabad wanting to lift that World Cup is a very special moment for Rohit himself. Yeah, but I, I don't think he'll be thinking of, of, of himself at all. Mm -hmm. You know, he seems to be the character that's just about the team. He'll go out and play aggressively, he'll try and get off to a fly, he'll attack the likes of Josh Hazelwood and, and Mitchell Stark, he'll target them without any question. He's not suddenly going to go, oh, it's a World Cup final, I'm just mm -hmm. going to play with him myself. If anything, he'll probably go harder. Oh. Yeah. I don't know how, how much how harder much you can oh, go. Oh, you can. <laughs> These guys, can, they can go even harder. They, you know, he only got 10 off the first over. He can get like 12 or 14. <laughs> oh, so he'll go out and play really hard. And I think that's quite a key moment in the game. For Australia to win, I think they can get row it early. Hmm. You know, they do that and it knocks India kind of off their kind of foundation, which they've had pretty much throughout the whole World Cup campaign. There is Australia's chance. Can they get row it early? Can they get Vera inside the first two overs out there batting? That'll be Australia's target. And that'll be what, what Australia talk about over the next few days. It'll be, wait a minute, Rohit's been so consistent. Virat at number three, he's been consistent. They're due. Mm. They're due to fail. And that is what the Aussie talk in. It'll be a very positive Australian dressing room. Um, they know how to win World Cups and they'll make it very, very difficult. India are the favourites and I think India are going to win the World Cup. And in India, in their own backyard, it'd be great for the game. But this Australian team, they, they just know how to win. And, and I will say that, the, 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 obviously, Rohit Sharma and Pat Cummins, they're two outstanding leaders. Mm. They really are high-class human beings leading uh, their countries with great distinction. The way that they go about the business, their manner on the pitch, um, just the subtle tactical manoeuvres, they're not waving their hands like just... <laughs> the team know what the captains need. You know, and that's always a nice, smooth operation when you know, you're not seeing fielders run everywhere. They all know where they need to be. A bowler comes on and everyone knows their fielding place. And, and I look at little things like Jadeja uh, last night. Where was he? He was in the key areas of the ground. So where Rohit Sharma knew the ball was primarily going to end up. So he's talking to his bowlers, right, what the tax is, wide Yorkers. Ah, so it'll go to deep third. Guess who we put there? It was almost like there were four Jadejas on the field yesterday. And this, well, that is great captaincy. You know, Pat Cummins is the same with Warner and Labuschagne. You know, they, they just know where to be. And the, the, the captain doesn't really need to tell them. You know, when you see a really good team, the players just know where, where they're going to be. And, you know, they know that they're in the hot zones and you just put the best fielders there. That's why they're the best two teams in the tournament, because every ounce of the operation seems to be working. Well, this is a formality. We have to look at India's squad uh, because, like I said, I'm superstitious. So, we do this for every preview. We can't miss it uh, out here. But, DK, no-brainer. No changes happening there, I'm sure. But uh, I'll quickly go to you all and ask you all your players to watch out for for the big day. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> I look out for Virat Kohli, Australia. That man is made of... 51? <laughs> different gravy. 51? I think so. For Australia... Uh, <laughs> All right, I'll just say um, Adam Zampa is going to have a good game. Ooh, that's an interesting choice. I think Zampa is going to get confidence uh, listening to this. He's not had the best day today, but Michael, for you? Uh, for the Aussies, I'm going to go the Bison, number three, Mitchell Marsh. You know, I just know he's carefree, dangerous, in great form. Missed out uh, today with an incredible catch, actually. We talk about the drops of South Africa. Well, that was a, a brilliant catch. So I'm going to go Mitchell Marsh, uh, Shubman Gill. <laughs>